<laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's Tom. It's Amelia. We're here on uh, Monday with Jesus. Right. And so we're glad to be we're glad to be back. Right. Uh, um, so the story today is from John three. It's got that verse in there that's very familiar. You hear see the football games and every every place. It's a good verse. Um, but we're going to hear the whole story around it and give us some context. Um, so, Tom, will tell us the story. Okay. So this is the story of Jesus and Nicodemus. There was a Pharisee whose name was Nicodemus, ruler of the Jews. And he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could do the signs that you do unless God was with him. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, unless one is born again from above, cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, What? <laughs> Can anyone be born? After they've grown old, can, can someone enter into the mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus said, truly I say to you, unless one is born again of water and the spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised or astonished that I've said to you, you must be born again from above. The wind blows where it chooses. We hear the sound of it, but we do not know where it has come from or where it's going. So also with all those who are born of the spirit. And Nicodemus said, Oh, how can these things be? And Jesus said, are you a teacher of Israel and you do not understand these things? We speak of what we know and we bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not believe our testimony. If I have spoken to you of earthly things and you have not believed me, how will you believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so also must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Well, that's the story. Great. Thank you, Tom. Okay, well, we're going to have some discussion about this born again from above business, but before we do that, um, I'm curious about Nicodemus coming at night. An interesting little detail that you, yeah. um, I'm not sure. Sometimes you really emphasize that. I don't know that, I, I don't remember if you did this time or not, I think, yeah. um, but, but it's interesting. So what, is there some particular meaning that we're supposed to attach to that? Yeah, that Jesus was a controversial figure and that Nicodemus uh, was afraid uh, you know, concerned uh, that uh, his going to talk to Jesus would be a controversial thing that would get him in trouble. Uh, so he came by night, okay. uh, when it would in, in secret. Uh, but it also makes it clear that he was really interested in Jesus. And so he was willing to take that risk. Yeah, so then, um, thank you. That that makes a lot of sense. 
Um, so Jesus talks about being, unless you are born again from above, I think you put, sometimes it's translated born again, sometimes it's translated from above, and you put them together because it means both things. Is that, am I remembering correctly about that? You want to talk, yes. talk about that a little bit for us? Well, the Greek word is anothen, and it means both again and from above the problem has been created by the translators so you know it's translated this is the nrsv uh, uh, unless one is born from above you cannot see the kingdom of god then nicodemus responds well how can anyone be born after growing old. So Nicodemus takes the word to mean yeah, from in a, this saying, yeah. being born again. Yeah, it doesn't make any but sense. Jesus says, born from above. And so it's built, it's the confusion is built into the translation. Right. So I think that it's important for contemporary audiences that it be that both words be used, born again from above. And that in that case, both Jesus' statement and Nicodemus' response makes sense. Does uh, it, from above, is that simply a reference to a spiritual thing, to heaven? To heaven. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. That, so, that Jesus ascended. There is no one who has ascended into heaven, but the one who has descended from heaven. And that's a statement about, you know, from John's time about Jesus having already, what, four years ago or something, ascended into heaven and then descended. Uh, so uh, that there are, you know, several things like that in this that are statements about things that were happening in John's time. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, uh, we uh, speak of what we know and we bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. Well, who's you? You is uh, the, uh, the community of Judeans in the Greco-Roman world, uh, and it is Pharisees. Uh, so uh, That was so actually that, one of the things I was going to ask you. Who is the we? Yeah, well, we are then the community of the followers of Jesus. Okay. That in John's time, were a significant community. And so there was dialogue going on. And that's what's reflected in this whole dialogue, is the dialogue between Pharisees and the followers of Jesus. So uh, this story has two levels of uh, a meaning, reference, Jesus' time, John's time. When it when was John's the, time? Uh, the late eighties, nineties, okay. early nineties. Uh, we don't know exactly, but that's the best conclusion. Probably, you know, sometime in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. So almost sixty years after, uh, well, probably sixty years after Jesus' life. Uh, so uh, a lot had happened in the meantime. Yeah. Okay. So the born again. I'm not sure exactly when it came about that were there were Christians who called themselves born again Christians. It seems like it seems like it was in my lifetime. <laughs> um, oh, it's been around a while. Has it longer than that? Okay. Well, anyway, um, wh why did they pick up on that phrase, and what does that mean to them, or what does it mean to Jesus? Or right. Well, what it, what it has come to mean is people who have uh, experienced a, uh, a conversion, a strong conversion, usually associated with being baptized uh, in the spirit, as well as being baptized. Uh, so it's a, a reference to uh, usually now conservative Christians uh, who are, uh, who claim and have experienced uh, a spiritual awakening. Okay. Uh, it is uh, 
So it's come to be associated with a certain brand, but it is descriptive of anybody who is a follower of, of Jesus, who has been baptized, and who has been gifted with the Spirit. Uh, but anyhow, that's that's kind of the okay. reference. All right. What does Jesus mean here by the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Uh, it is not a nation state. It is not uh, the kingdom of Israel. Uh, so part of what is involved in John is the reconception of the kingdom of God as a universal kingdom involving all peoples. And that's true of the whole of the New Testament, that the, the framework of the kingdom of God is inclusive. The kingdom of God is all people. It's all nations. It is then uh, the coming of the kingdom of God was the coming of the rule of God's spirit embodied in Jesus in then the life of the world. Okay, here's another, another one to throw at you. What do we think Jesus means by eternal life? Is yeah, that well, we all die. Right, we all die. Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll say in relation to that, but also in relation to earlier stuff about heaven. None of us really believe in heaven in the way that time that people in the first century did. They believed that there was actually a physical realm above the earth uh, where uh, the angels were, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, so it was the, the, the place of divine and that Jesus ascended up into heaven, into this physical place. Uh, well, you know, now, where would heaven be? Uh, with, with, with the satellites that are going around the earth? Would it be between the earth and the moon? Would it be between the earth and Mars? Or all the galaxies, hundreds of thousands of light years away from the earth? Would that be heaven? So, uh, so none of us now in the world really believe in the way that they did, because they thought of the universe as a three-story universe the heavens, the earth, those things under the earth, Hades. Uh, so it is a description of, a, of the place of the spirit. It's a metaphor for God's place. Uh, and so also then uh, when there's the question of, you know, uh, uh, you know, where, where is heaven? And what was the question that you asked? Yeah, what is heaven? <laughs> I think actually you brought it up. No, I was asking about eternal life. Eternal life. Yeah. Right. That's, well, they, yeah. That's, you're just, that you're, was it. <laughs> you're avoiding Hello. my question. <laughs> well, I got involved with all this stuff about heaven. Uh, so eternal life would be then to be in heaven. That would be one way of conceiving it. But what it means is eternal life in the spirit, that there is flesh, flesh dies, but being born again in the spirit, being born in the spirit is then being born into eternal life, an eternal spiritual life uh, in which there is unity with God and with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's this eternal life is then eternal spiritual life. Okay, all right. Oh, so, all right, so this story encompasses this um, wonderful verse, for God so loved the world that God sent God's only son, um, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. In what sense do you think the coming of Jesus um, saves the world? Right. It is the, the distinctive thing that Jesus introduced in the traditions of the world is the power of love, of nonviolence, of the 
confidence in God's power that's a spiritual power. We tend to believe that the world is saved through violence. We have movies that re retell that story over and over again uh, of some great hero who will save the world by killing whatever there are. Jesus introduced a different way, a way of peace, of reconciliation, of loving one's enemies, of transformation of the world from a place of conflict and warfare into a place of peace. And so the uh, so my conviction uh, is that the reason why Jesus coming was so important is that it introduced a whole different way of life and confidence then in the power of uh, the spirit of love, yeah. of reconciliation, and uh, and a, a a story other than the story of, re, of the myth of redemptive violence. Yeah. You know, I read an article just yesterday, I think, um, some documents have made it clear uh, that we came very, very close to dropping nuclear bombs on, um, on China uh, years ago. I think it was the Eisenhower administration um, because of China's not invasion of Taiwan, but there, there was just a, there was a lot of stuff going on around Taiwan. Um, right. And I, it made me think, you know, we tend to think of maybe Jesus as well, that's all, you know, that'd be nice, but <laughs> it's not realistic. But when I read that, how close we, and of course, we all, we all know about the, well, we, we don't all know, but um, you know, how close we came with regard to Cuba yeah. um, uh, the, of having a nuclear war. Um, we really do need to change. I think Jesus really did have a good practical idea about about what would save us in a literal sense, uh, uh, save the world. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So it is. So just, God did not send right. Jesus to condemn the world right. to exercise judgment, right. but rather to save the world from belief in the power right. uh, of violence right. and us a warfare way. and hatred yeah. so he introduced a whole different way yeah. uh, of life of belief in uh, the power of the kingdom of god uh, and it has changed history in many ways and most recently in the 20th century when people have had confidence in south africa in the power of nonviolence in the Philippines, in the civil rights movement, in India, we've seen the spiritual power of nonviolence and of reconciliation between enemies uh, in our century. Uh, so uh, I think we have a lot more to learn about the ways of making peace and that a primary source for that is to understand and explore the spiritual significance of what is revealed and made clear in this in the scriptures and in the stories of Jesus. Okay, great. I guess I want to make sure that I'm don't communicate the wrong thing. Uh, the little story I told about um, possibility of nuclear weapons. The, those who were advocating that uh, were the military. Eisenhower actually, I think, is the reason that did not happen. Um, so uh, I'm very grateful for. For, for his right. wisdom. <laughs> All right. right. Okay. And in the case of the Cuba situation, it was Nikita Khrushchev who uh, made a significant decision not to pursue it, but to withdraw and to uh, take the uh, missiles out of Cuba. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, everybody, have with those thoughts, <laughs> have a good week. Um, live into this story of um, Jesus's conversation with Nicodemus who came to him by night, brave man with some very uh, profound spiritual questions. It gave us a lot to think about.
Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great week.